So in this real final part, um, we'll actually bring together all the elements we've made into a final composition and uh, see how it looks. So first off, I had this branch here selected. I'm going to hide that because we don't need it. Um, our wreath is already being scattered, so it looks fine. Now, before we start placing these guys in, um, we're going to do the lights first. And we're basically going to do these the same way we did the wreath. We're going to make like um, a shape to scatter these on and kind of distribute them within the wreath. But rather than using just a simple um, helix in the same shape, we're going to bend it around a little bit. And you'll see what I mean. I'm going to wrap it around the wreath. So I'm going to make a helix, make it quite long. We can, oh, sorry about that. We can um, adjust these parameters. Wow, this is really not, there we are. We can adjust these parameters on the fly, just kind of see how well it works. Um, I'm gonna leave the radius to 10 on each one and maybe bring the height to 125. So let's say we can do 10 turns and by throwing a bend modifier on here, we can actually just loop it around so Tapping in 360 degrees makes it a perfect loop, and we can start placing it over our wreath. The nice thing about this is that we can actually see what we're doing now, and we can kind of position it the way we want to. So by changing the height, we'll actually make the wreath, uh, the helix itself, a little bigger, so it'll wrap around nicer. And by changing the radius, um, we can make it wrap kind of a little tighter around our wreath. So see maybe 3.5 wrap it around nice and tight there we go and we can use this again to scatter so I'm gonna give this a name as well I'll call this uh, light cord and no nope, not our materials but our particle flow what we're going to do is start scattering this light on the cord itself. Now, rather than making a completely new particle system, what I'm going to do is actually just copy this one, um, but turn it off first so that we can just use the same setup and tweak it a little bit and don't have to build it from scratch. So I'm going to copy this. There we go. Make sure it's a copy and not an instance. And I'm going to remain, rename both of these. System wreath and rename this to particle flow system lights. Now, at this point, you want to make sure you're saving quite a lot because um, I've noticed that it can be, you know, when you're adjusting some of these, it can be a little unstable. Um, once it's done, though, it's usually fine. It's just, yeah, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just particle flow being weird, but um, just make sure uh, you save often because bad things can happen. So there we are. Um, again, before we can actually use our helix here, our light cord, if I add, click by list again, it won't show up because first off, we're gonna have to enable it in the viewport, change the thickness again. Uh, and still, it won't work because of course, we still have to have to add the edit mesh. Now I found that adding the edit mesh under the bend actually works a lot better. Um, so we'll add this one now, and there's our light cord. So this is still off. Um, before we turn it on, we're gonna change our amount down a little bit. So maybe 100 lights. I don't know if that'll be enough, but we'll see. <clears throat> we're gonna turn this one on, and you'll see it still has the branch as a shape instance. So I'm gonna pick this one and huge lights everywhere. So rather than scaling this down um, at a poly level, I'm just going to do it in particle flow. So it's down to 10. I'm not going to turn on any variation because, um, well, they all came from the same factory, so they should be the same size, really. If we turn on our wreath again, um, we see that I'm still having a little bit of trouble with the um, multi-sub object not showing up properly. But... Um, it looks okay. I think our lights, I think we should have enough. There's a couple sticking through here and there. It should look quite nice. So with that done, I'm going to hide this one. Save. And unhide the two Christmas decorations. 
So this one's, these ones I am going to scale, uh, make them a little smaller. And when we, I'm going to go into editable poly to do this, because um, it'll scale better. If you just use a scale tool uh, on the object itself, uh, some of the values tend to go a little weird because you're just adding a factor to every single value on that object. And in the long run, um, it'll just make your life easier if you scale it on a polygon level rather than a object level. So if we go to scale now, you'll see that the scale doesn't really do what we want it to do. If we make sure that our transforms are set to, um, you know, being used all together, it'll treat this as one object rather than separate parts. So if you scale it now, actually make it look quite nice. I'm not going to make these too big. Um, I'm just going to make tiny ones. There we go. Do the same thing for this object. Make it smaller as well. And the last thing that we need to do, and turn this turbo smooth down because you know they are fairly small, and maybe we can actually turn it off altogether. Depending on the size of your object, you might be able to get away with not using turbo smooth. Um, of course, the problem that we're left with now is the uh, top here not being completely round. Now, I'm just going to throw them in there. You can turbo smooth them if you want, but I don't think it'll be very visible. If it is, I can always turn it back on. I'm going to change the pivot point of this as well, just to be inside the loop. Um, it's easier that way. You can just pretend as if you're hanging them yourself, and it works a little quicker. There you go, bring this up. There we are. Bring this into the middle a little bit more. And that's it. That should be fine. So with these done, we can start placing them. And yes, you'll have to place these by hand, I'm afraid. But um, I will skip through the rest of this video uh, as I place them, so you don't have to go through the whole thing. All right, welcome back. Um, I've just arranged these uh, just a little bit. They look nice. Now, something I notice is that my cord here, um, maybe I'll push it back a little bit because we might see it too much. Uh, also, I'm going to change the radius on this just to be a little smaller so the lights are really hidden within the wreath um, and we don't see the cord too much. And one more thing I'm going to do as well is uh, give this the same material as the housing of the lights. There we go. And that's that. So when we render this now, um, because I have the only light in my scene is the lights coming off the Christmas lights, it's going to give us an idea of how it's going to look um, and how bright they are. So I'm just going to set up the size real quick, maybe 800 by 800. We've got a, a round wreath, so square frame should be OK. Add a camera real quick, like a 50 millimeter maybe. Zoom in just a little bit, move it over. Uh, zero and zero, and we can center it out. There we go. And if we render now, we'll see that as soon as it comes up, we have our light shining within our wreath. Now obviously this is pretty dark um, because the lights themselves aren't that strong. They're just kind of an added effect. I wouldn't try and light the whole thing with it. Um, just make sure that they give some kind of brighter spots here and there. It makes it look quite nice. <clears throat> so as far as the light go, I think that's okay. Maybe we could up the quantity just a little bit, like 50, and render again. There we go, just a little bit more detail. Um, as I said, it's not really lighting the entire wreath, it's just giving it a little bit of extra. So, what I'm going to do is maybe <clears throat> bring up the multiplier a little more. All right, let's see what happens when we go nuts. Let's put in 100. And 
no, no, that's actually not too bad. The other thing you'd want to watch out though is like super bright pixels. Um, if they're too crazy, then your anti-aliasing won't be uh, very nice, so you get kind of jaggy edges. So keep on the lookout for that, but all in all, I think this is quite good for just the lights themselves. So what we're going to do now is add some lights really, really quickly. Uh, I'm going to do them very basic. And I'm going to make this a rectangle and a targeted light. What I'm going to do for the target is I'm going to bring it up to the center of the wreath so we don't have to worry too much about how the light is shining. Bring it back. Maybe something like that. See what's going on. It's lighting okay, I guess. We want to make our shadows fairly soft, so we can make a pretty big light. And I think that would work. All right, <clears throat> so we have this light. Uh, it's gonna be our main light, then we can use a second light. It's gonna be our fill light. You can have it come a little bit from more from the side and the bottom and not as intense. And then for the last part, we can have a backlight. So we're gonna just center out, have that shine on it. Have this one pretty big, actually. Uh, oh, these are all instances. Let's change that real quickly. Let's make this one unique. Bring this one's intensity back up as well. So that one's gonna be 50. Let's make this one like 25. And make this one fairly low because we're gonna increase the size. And also we're going to make sure that we can't actually see it in our render. Um, so it is affecting our reflections, but we can actually see uh, the light source itself when we render it out. Um, and I think that's about it. Maybe one last thing left to do is we can make this one a little warmer. That would be too much. Make this one a little colder. We'll see. And a little bluer just to create some nice contrast and when we render now <coughs> we'll have the wreath itself looking quite nice um, might be a little overlit but depending on the uh, background you put in there you can get some cool results now one thing as well that you'll notice is the decorations don't look too good again this is because we just have a black environment there's nothing in there there's no HDR in there so we won't get really nice reflections we'll just get like a little bit of reflection from the wreath itself and you know the lights here and there so we want to make this look really good I'm gonna add in like a studio HDR um, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that for now uh, we can try something else though to make them kind of look cool cancel this Go back to our uh, materials and have a look at the reflection and bring the glossiness down to maybe like 0.5, maybe even less. And this will be pretty slow, but it'll give it kind of a sandblasted look and we can fake our way out of not having that many uh, things to reflect in our scene. So if we render again now, we should get something that's a little nicer. There we are. They're starting to look a little better. But again, uh, an environment HDR will make this look really cool. Um, and that's that. The final result you'll see uh, has just a little bit of post-production on it, but um, it's added kind of a, a faux white background. Maybe some glow here and there. Um, great thing about rendering this into a uh, floating point format is that you can really easily kind of pick out the bright spots of your image and make them glow a little bit more. What you'll see though is that the overall kind of lighting that we had from the lights in the wreath is kind of gone. So to bring that back you could tweak your main lights a little bit but even still I think this looks pretty good. Um, so yeah that's that I guess. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm sure this last part was kind of long and hard to get through but that's okay. Um, Thanks for sticking with it. And yeah, if you have any questions, just ask me on my blog, YouTube, whatever. Um, and happy holidays.